Do you ever find yourself needing more storage? Take advantage of that wall. Create extra storage in areas that you never thought would be possible. Get rid of that clutter, move it to the wall with the Easy Stud Rack Storage System. Eugene Segovia here with Easy Stud Rack. Today we are going to create another little niche. This time it's going to be behind the door. This could be storage for ink pads, for craft room stuff, all those little knickknack stuff that just get thrown everywhere in a room. It's going to be similar to this restroom storage behind a door. The key is how easy it is to create that extra storage. With the easy stud rack storage system, boom, you're in there. Okay, what's the first thing we always look at? We always look at what is around this area. Is there a light switch? Any electrical outlets? There's one outlet. You can use a stud finder. Come in here and kind of follow where the stud finder has a little electrical sensor there that tells you there's electricity in there. Mainly it always goes up or across. I don't think it'll be this way, but we'll see. What's another area that we look at? We always look up in the attic and what's on the other side of this wall. So follow me. And right on the other side, it's just a big old staircase. So it looks like we're good there. There's that same area. We're right above in the attic. And it looks like there's an air condition right above there. I don't see any wires. It's going to be hard to tell. But it doesn't look like there might be anything coming out. Like here, you see a wire, but it goes down to this little light switch. I would say we got a thumbs up to proceed. I'll have a list of all the items in the description. And there'll be links there where you can buy them from Amazon. Those are affiliated links. All right, so first things first is I go in and just kind of get an idea of where the studs are. All right here's one edge of a stud. All right here's another edge of the stud. For us to cut this drywall out, we're going to use zip bit. And you got to be careful. You got to make sure it's the one that's got the little flat spot on the end. It's got a little flat spot right there. So when it hits the stud, it won't cut anymore. And what I like doing is using this guy. I just come in here, screw this guy on, and then I always set it. It's got numbers on there, but I can't see all that. Uh, usually the walls are half inch. We're gonna make this about an inch, one inch. So it'll stick out about one inch. Oh, one thing I also recommend, when you find your stud, you just wanna mark a few places. There's supposedly the edge of the stud. I uh, will do one more mark up here. And then we'll do one more mark over here. And then we'll come in with this guy. Just basically a straight edge. Hopefully, this is just the guide. Kind of give us an idea if we're going down the right path. A couple of things that I look at, I look at the eye level right here to see if it's level between the two marks. It looks like it is, so it kind of gives me some good uh, indication that we're heading down the right path. I've also learned that I want to just cut out a little piece first. Cut out a little piece and then look inside to see what we see. Another thing, vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner really helps, keeps the dust down as you're cutting. I usually set this thing about 25. I guess that's 2500 RPM. So we cut this guy out. Now we're just gonna take a little peek, see what's in there. A wire right there. Okay, see above. All oh, clear above. So I gotta find out how far that wire is. Probably follows all along there like that. So that rides right along that stud. Sometimes though, if you keep it there too long, it starts to burn the wood. It starts digging in a little deeper. 
Take your time, but don't take your time. <laughs> well, I've reviewed it with the owner, who is a pain. Did I say that out loud? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go all the way to the top of the door. So the easiest thing for me is just to open the door up like this. And just get my pencil like this and mark a line. Mark a line. I'll put a line there. It's just a rough line. Doesn't have to be perfect. There's a line there, but I'm just making this level. See this middle ball right here? And we just draw a line all the way across. There we go, a line all the way across. Now when we cut it, it's not gonna be perfect because it's bumpy and all that, but we'll see the results. That piece is lost forever. <laughs> I'm so funny. I'm so funny. I know this isn't the right saw to use, but there is some wire down there. And I do have this chair rail right here. Whatever you want to call this around the room. So I'm just hand sawing a two by four. We're through, and then we'll do the same thing on this side. Whew, through. All right, so the plan is to come down. We've already cut this piece here. I'm just gonna follow down here all the way down till we hit this trim board, because this one only allowed to go so far. So I'll hit the trim board and just follow it across until I hit the stud and then we'll be ready for easy stud racks. Well, this is the first. I broke the tip. I must have been pushing down on that too hard. That's all right, because we got plenty more. I guess this is a good opportunity to show you how to install them. Dremel tool has a uh, little button here that locks this guy. You use your wrench that comes with your package. Pull the broken one out, come in, grab a new one. I just push it down all the way. Hand tighten, I'm still pushing the button down here. And I just give a little, nice little hand tight. Put this guy in. And just what I've noticed, in case you're wondering, I a little hand tighten. This is pushed in all the way down, I tightened it. And then this guy here goes in and out like this. I've got it all the way down. In case you're wondering, with this particular brand, Dremel Tool 4000, I've got it pushed down all the way, and that's a good distance. I mean, this tool really cuts along that edge. It's really good. Up here, we'll just put a board across. We're gonna leave this part open. This wire, we'll end up putting a shelf right above it, like this, and then below it. Or we could just use the same sheetrock, piece of sheetrock and sheetrock around it. That way it'll follow some kind of code. Now it's time for my favorite part, installing the easy stud rack. A lot of people ask, well, how much does one package cover? Here's a great example. If you were to take this one section, this is what I call a section. You got a left and a right. One package covers about four feet, three inches. So if you wanna calculate how much easy stud racks you're gonna need, if, if you put them back to back, you can space them out if you want, make them go a long way. But I'm just gonna come in here and measure from the bottom all the way to the top, six feet, five inches. So if one package is four feet, three inches, two packages will be about eight feet, six inches. It'll take about two packages. Each package takes about five minutes to install. We're gonna work from the bottom and work our way up. Now one package includes screws to attach to a two by four, and you put four screws in each one of these guys. 
Now, one thing I do want to point out, and I point this out in every video, when you put two of these back to back, the holes go all the way through. So you can see that. Now, if you flip it around, the holes alternate. So there's a hole right here and a hole right here. What you want to do is, is each easy stud rack has text. So always show the text. It's going to be hard to see here. Show the text going up. So the texts are going up like that. And then texts are going up like that. Now, you're probably wondering, what does it matter? Well, if you were to put two back to back, say we cut out this other section and you put two back to back, your screws can hit each other when you're screwing it in. So that's why we always have text facing up. All right, one tip is paint just right here in the corner before you install the easy stud racks. That way you can just roll the rest of this and the easy stud rack won't be in the way. Here's what we got. We're gonna put this board and if I cut it the right length, it would go in there. Okay. I'm gonna cut it just a little bit smaller because the customer wants a little hidden compartment underneath here. So I'm gonna shave it off just a little bit and then we're gonna put these guys underneath here and under this side so this board will sit right on top of it. Now one thing I do want to point out, and we're gonna use drywall screws, inch and a quarter long. I drill the hole so these screws can fit in there like that. See how far they stick out, not very much. All it's there for is just so it doesn't move whenever you pull your board in and out. So I'll be right back. I'm gonna trim this board a little bit more and then these will be ready to rock and roll. Now that we put this board in here, I'm looking at this thing and it looks like it's not exactly level. So this end over here has got to go up probably about a penny. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a couple of pennies here. All this is for is to make sure this shelf is level. Nope, looks like it might need to be a quarter. So I'll use a quarter. Here. There we go. Once that guy's level, then I want to install this guy. And I want this to be removable, just to have a little hidden compartment. So I'm just going to add a couple more quarters as a point of reference, just to allow a little gap in there so the shelf can easily move in and out. Put my finger right here in front to make sure this is flush with the wall. Aim for the center of the hole. That way it looks nice and clean. There we go. Come in, I'll skip two, one, two holes. Come in and go to the third one. Do the same thing from the bottom. Skip two holes. Now if you're gonna store super heavy items, then you can put more screws. What we'll do is we'll install the next one. What I recommend on this other one is you cut a piece of board to fit across there and then you use your level to make sure everything's level. That board, I would say 14 inches. It's actually 14 and an eighth, but I'll give it an eighth less just to allow easily going in and out. Put the money back and go cut the board. Okay, we got the shelf cut. This shelf is a one by four. The shelf underneath it is a one by five. Home Depot sells one by five. It's the only place I've been able to find it as of today. Since we took the sheetrock out and we moved this to the front, we have a gap back here. Not a really big deal if you're storing stuff. Little stuff might roll off of there, but I like the one by fives. So what I'm doing is my thumb is kind of resting up against here, making sure it's nice and flush. And then I've got the shelf. You see how it's not level? I just start lifting up on it until it's level. Once it's level, then I'll come in here and put the screw in. And just straight in for the middle of the hole. There we go. Nice and clean, level. Now we just continue on up. Now that everything's level, it's time to just go, go, go. Now here, comes the tricky part. We got some wires here. What I'll do is I'll come in 
just mark where the wire is going to be and I'll slice out this much. And I need to slice out and go in to inch and three quarter. Alright, so I know that the wire is going to go in there. I got to go to inch and three quarter. Maybe I'll give it just a little bit more. So I got to cut that out. Now I got a trick for that. So what we got here, I like using these guys. If you don't have a pair of these, get you a pair. I'll have a link down. These things are awesome. Used to cut water hose, all kind of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and where I had it all laid out. Like that. Like that. Like that. I do it in three steps. Just cut it. I'm going to cut the other side. Oh. Ah. Now the next thing, I just get a regular box blade. Come in here and just do a little, nice little cut like that. Just something to break the piece of plastic. It just snaps right off. Look at that. Look how easy that is. I just move the wire, kind of feed it in. Hopefully I cut it in deep enough. Oh yeah. Look at that. There we go. We just keep going. We'll do the same thing for the other side. Cut it out right here. This one goes in two inches. This is the side that needs to get cut. Right here. So I'm measuring two inches in. Boom. Just like that. Slides right in. Oof, yeah. Sometimes if the plastic blows out like that a little bit, you could come in and just put another screw in there. There you go. See that? Much better. There's the wiring. Wiring. And what we'll do is just have a shelf like that. Oh, another thing, don't cut all your shelves at one time because sometimes they'll fit tighter. Like down here, it fits looser. And as you go up, it fits tighter. So, just make a note. I have a feeling all this would just be going fast forward. Fast. Since it almost takes up one whole easy stud rack, I'm just going to notch out the sheetrock at the top. And then I'm going to have this shelf rest right on top of that. I'm just going to mark a line across. Like this. So now I'm just going to come in here and cut all that out. And then I'll just slide this shelf in. I think I'm just gonna use the handy dandy box cutter. So as I'm cutting, I'm gonna actually follow this guy right here, the white, up like this. Okay, do the same thing over here. I'm gonna follow the white up. There we go. Then we just keep cutting away slowly and then angling the knife up. That way, when I put the shelf in there, It'll fit in nice and tight. Just made a mess. The sharper the knife, the easier it is to cut too. Now, the shelf I'm gonna cut is gonna be 13 and three quarter. It's the difference, 14 and a quarter down at the bottom, 14 and an eighth, 13 and three quarter. That tells you how not plumb these things are. Never cut your shelves all at the same time. Cut the board, see how well it fits. There we go. I love one by fives when you paint this on the edge. It makes it look a lot better than having a gap beat behind there. There's the bottom secret compartment shelf. You want to stash your cashola? Yeah. I like it. All that's left is painting and put shelves in. Mm, mm, mm. And that's a wrap.